Hey guys, I wanted to follow back up with you with some pictures I took from the Eclipse. If you saw my last video on my iPad case, the uh, Senna Future Folio, you saw that I mentioned that I'm no longer in South Carolina, I'm actually in Texas. So that puts me way far off the path of totality as you can see here. I was going to be right, right under it in Columbia, South Carolina. But I'm back in Texas and yesterday at work I thought, you know what, I'm going to at least try to do this. So on my way home I realized that I actually had a 9 stop neutral density filter that would fit my 100 to 300 millimeter lens. Now that's a 67 millimeter thread size. So I went home and this is about an hour before the eclipse. I screwed that filter onto the lens and I set the camera for as short of an exposure as possible. I opened up extended ISO, I set the ISO to 100. I shot it all the way down at f22, the smallest aperture, 300 millimeters and I set the shutter speed to 1 16,000th of a second and that's that's the electronic shutter and I took a shot of the sun and lo and behold it looked fine uh, it was not blown out I could actually see some sunspots on the surface and I could see that the eclipse had not yet started so um, I had my settings and yeah some clouds rolled by but I took this chance to uh, get some video as you can see here kinda cool seeing that happen uh, this is early on in the eclipse and what followed were just this, uh, this very nice series of shots. These are maybe 20 minutes apart. Uh, same exposure settings, ISO 100, F22, 1 16,000th of a second, 300 millimeters, and with that 9-stop ND filter. And when I was framing these shots, I tried to do it very quickly because I didn't want to linger on the sun too much. I mean... I'm shooting with a mirrorless camera, so I'm not so much worried about my eyes, I'm worried about the sensor taking all that heat. And yeah, the filter helps, but you know, it, the, it's the sun, guys. It, it's Even a 9-stop filter is not going to completely shield you from damage from the heat. So then when I had all these shots, I put together the first eight into a sequence. Uh, all the way down on the right side, that's about two-thirds um, two coverage. That's the most we ever got for Houston. So uh, it, it, was, it was definitely a cool experience seeing that, and I'm just very thankful that we didn't have the clouds in the way. I was able to get a full sequence of shots, and it, it really wasn't that hard. I didn't have to buy uh, an expensive uh, solar filter. I just used a very dark ND filter and set the camera for a very short exposure. Uh, having that electronic shutter uh, was a very good thing to have. So let's talk about how it looked for you guys who've maybe never seen the clips before. Well, looking around my backyard, and I mean, this was just right in my backyard. I didn't want to deal with traffic or going anywhere. So I just uh, shot up at the sun, and everything kind of looked like it would if I had sunglasses on. Everything was just a little bit darker, but the shadows were still very well defined. Um, the light output was kind of like you'd expect on a cloudy day, but you'd look up and the sun was right there, and there were no clouds in front of it. Um, it was nice. It, it didn't really seem to cool down that much. Uh, kind of, it was just really pleasant. That's the best way to describe it. Everything was just a little bit more dim. And, um, you know, once you passed the peak coverage in another half hour, 45 minutes, it was back to the usual blinding August sun for Houston. So it, it was a fun experience. Uh, the next one is going to come through Texas, like right down the I-35 corridor in uh, 2024, seven years from now. So um, I'll be 35 years old. <laughs> we'll see where I'm at then. But um, yeah, hopefully I'll get to catch that one. That will be a, uh, a full eclipse for that part of Texas. Really sad I missed totality, guys. I saw some really cool shots from South Carolina where you see that glow around the edge, all that. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I tried some bracketing with my partial eclipse shots, but I wasn't able to get any other detail off of the, off of the surface or just around the surface. It just kind of washed out. So I think I extracted all the information I could from those shots and the circumstances. I think it's cool you can see the sunspots. Um, very detailed, very sharp, autofocus. The camera did a the camera did such a great job shooting the sun. I was kind of impressed. Had no problem focusing. Uh, every shot was just dead on, accurate, and um, it took a lot of the guesswork out of it. I, I really enjoyed it. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed these clips. I tried to keep it short and interesting. 
I'm glad I was able to get some Eclipse shots, maybe not quite as spectacular as I would have liked, but I think that in the future this is definitely something I want to take the time to see, even if I have to travel. Um, and the shots are one thing, but just, just seeing the, the world in that state is something that's really hard to put on video. It's, it was a very cool experience indeed. All right, guys, well, please like and subscribe. I've got some more cool stuff for you coming up uh, today. Just kind of by happenstance, I was able to pre-order a Super Nintendo Classic Edition. Um, I was able to get in before they uh, ran out of pre-orders. So in about you know a month, month and a week's time, I should have a video on the SNES Classic. All right, guys, thanks for watching.